Hello friends, Techman Pat here. Happy holidays, it's nearly Christmas time, decorations are going up and every shopping centre will become a war zone for a parking spot. Get your cameras ready for some fun filled video shenanigans, be ready for anything. In any case guys, while the rest of the population is uh, going wild outside, I say to you, welcome to this week's Dirt Report, the weekly show about our nation's broadband network, telcos, and uh, well, everything else in between. This week we have some interesting topics, from CEOs to ATOs to NBN Co's. So, Let's get into it. Hopefully we can keep this one a bit short. First off, Optus, who are currently pushing 5G onto the nation and paying fines amongst other things, have had an internal shuffle. CEO Alan Liu is stepping aside, not down, but just to the side, moving into a newly created role. A rather long one, but here goes. CEO of Group Strategy and Business Development and Country Chief Officer Thailand. Bam, how about that? With his absence, Kelly Bayer Rosemarin will take his role from April 2020. Bayer Rosemarin comes to Optus from the Thieves Guild. Uh, oh, I mean, sorry, uh, Combank. Not sure why that just slipped out. I wonder why. She's a former Commonwealth Bank executive, and in fact, Bayer Rosemarin has worked in several executive roles at CBA from 2003 through to 2012, and again from 2013 to 2018. So she's no stranger to doing the dodgies on their customers. In saying that, she has been Deputy CEO of Optus Consumer Division since March. Lou has been CEO of Optus and Singtel's Consumer Australia Group since 2014. Now, Bayer Rosemary will be taking the reins to spearhead the ongoing 5G rollout. Well, we're not done with Optus just yet, because you can't hire an ex-CBA executive without bringing some of their knowledge, skills and, well, baggage. I suppose the Royal Banking Commission didn't teach anyone anything. And in case, the federal courts have ordered Optus to pay 6.4 million in penalties after the ACCC took aim, shot and scored over Optus making claims to their customers that their broadband connections will be disconnected. You may ask, but technically that is true. With the NBN rollout, people will be disconnected and they will need to reconnect to the NBN. So what's wrong with Optus taking, well, the initiative? Well, just like CBA charging customers post-mortem and wondering why the folks aren't paying, Optus in May last year took a proactive approach to marketing and emailed over 130,000 of its own mobile customers telling them that their existing home broadband services would be disconnected very soon. And here is a smoking but can quit anytime gun, these services were provided by Optus competitors. The email urged customers to change to its own NBN broadband offering, telling them to make the switch before it's too late. But too late in the NBN sense of the word is about 18 months after the NBN becomes available that you need to actually switch. Now, the federal court found that Optus actions were misleading or deceptive, simply because these customers were yet to face any immediate disconnection of their broadband services. Well, cue our savior, ACCC Chair Rod Sims, who said that the false sense of urgency may have prevented customers from shopping around for better deals if they feared their broadband would soon be cut off. A lot of people are fearing that already anyway. Sims continued in his statement, as the NBN rollout nears completion, consumers around Australia are making decisions about whether and when to move onto the NBN and what services are best for them. The industry should be helping customers during this process, not providing them with misleading information. We are continuing to watch this area closely. We took this case against Optus because we were concerned its emails created a false sense of urgency for consumers and may have discouraged them from shopping around for the best deal available. And bam, $6.4 million fine. Though it might be a drop in the bucket for Optus and maybe next time they might think twice about being deceptive in their marketing. Eh, yeah, nah, that's exactly not what's going to happen, nor did. This won't stop them or any other telcos and well, the proof is in the Christmas pudding. It's their second fine in two years. And you know what, it does not end there. The final fun fact of this case is that the emails in question here were sent two days after the telco was fined the first time around for also misleading the public about NBN services. So obviously 48 hours is just not long enough to check all your outgoing marketing content. Speaking of the NBN, some interesting statistics have emerged this week. NBN Co released a series of documents outlining the changes over the last 12 months in internet usage for Australia. These set of consumption numbers have only been previously disclosed once before. They said the amount of data consumed by the average customer has grown by 24.6% over the 12 months to June 2019. 
and it's probably because of the one guy who smashed 26 terabytes of data in one month. Yep, you heard that right. NBN Co has reported a Queenslander who smashed out 26 terabytes of data in one month. Now, I don't know about you, but I can think of only one way of getting that much traffic, and that's BitTorrent. And again, that's kind of damaging, so there's a lot of eyes on this fella right now. And it's drawing a lot of attention from other members of the uh, internet rather than just NBN Co. Well, NBN Co, however, did not say who was directly responsible. Instead, they said the growth in streaming video use plus the growing numbers of connected devices is the reason for the increase. Video streaming is now the biggest single component of data consumption, slightly ahead of web browsing. And I kind of wonder what they mean by that. And for those interested in numbers, total data consumption exceeded 1.36 exabytes, which is actually 1.36 billion gigabytes in that month of June. Now, according to the NBN Co, it is equivalent of watching the David Attenborough Planet Earth in high definition, which you probably can't even stream on NBN, but in any case, over 30.6 million times. Let's move on. The CEO of Optus has also moved on. They have been fined for the second time in two years. What else can go wrong? Well, it looks like the ATO wanted to chip into that bad luck bucket of Optus. The ATO has looked towards breaking apart the current contract with Optus that is worth $1 billion for their managed network services. The ATO is looking to have more flexible contracts. They're looking for new contracts to cover unified communications and contact center services, which will supplement the ATO's existing managed network services deal with Optus when it expires at the end of June next year. Optus has held the ATO's managed network services deal since the last split from its previous service company, DXS, in 2009. Uh, then they were up against Dimension Data, Telstra, and CSC for the first part of the contract that was worth $186 million. Then they received an extension of the contract worth $217 million and pushed out the end date to June 30th, 2020. Uh, look, good on the ATO for always shopping around. No one company stays at the top of its game for a long time, and competition is a win for many. New contracts keep everyone on their toes, and they'll try harder next time. Now, before I finish off today's report, I wanted to mention an article I read this week around how New Zealand's internet is compared to ours. And while there are many highlights where NZ has fast internet in some situations, I wanted to point one thing out. In New Zealand, 95% of customers have subscription packages higher than 25 megabits per second, with close to a third on 100 megabits per second. You see, unlike here, the CVC causes a lot of issues for NBN resellers and customers. And the single most important reason that New Zealand achieves this is that the wholesale pricing structure doesn't penalize customers who want to move to higher speeds. Australia's high wholesale costs that result from the CBC pricing deprives Australians of high quality broadband. Something to think about. Thank you very much for tuning in this week's update. I hope it was a little bit interesting. So if you like this video, then tap that like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this and actually other tech related videos from Australian tech YouTubers, I suppose, then consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and bye.